Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome in to the Bears Coaches Show with Head Coach Matt Eberflus. Hope everybody's weekend was great. It's time to talk Bears Packers. 28-19, the final goes Green Bay's way. Matt, how are you feeling this evening? Uh, I'm doing well. Uh, doing well. We had, got a uh, chance to review the tape uh, this morning with the players. I uh, had our team meeting. Um, I showed them a lot of the positives that we talked about, you know, after I said, like, after the game. Obviously, one of uh, Justin Fields' better passing games. Um, that was really due to the fact of the offensive line. You know, the offensive line did a great job of protecting him, giving him the time um, that he needed. Uh, I thought he had great connection, you know, with a couple of receivers, obviously. You know, nice job with him and Cole. I thought that was uh, really good. Had a couple of spots with him. And then, obviously, those deep passes. You know, the one to EQ was really nice. Harry was really good. Um, the, the run he had was outstanding, obviously. Um, so there's a lot of good takeaways from that game, you know. And then defensively, really, you know, having all those young players in there, you know, and uh, doing a really good job on pass defense, you know, holding that down and, and doing a really good job with the, you know, completion percentage and all that. And uh, I thought our guys uh, really fought hard and did a really nice job there, you know. And obviously I talked to them about finishing, how we got to finish better and, and showed them those plays as well. And uh, each player got a, a few things to work on during the bye week, you know, so he's going to get some cut-ups sent to him and uh, from the coaches and, and we're going to work on that. And then, obviously, we're going to work on scheme. You know, we're going to look at uh, from New England all the way to now um, the games and the last several games and look and see what we can do better and what we want to get done and accomplish the next four games. So uh, we're excited about that, and we're going to get going on that shortly. Honestly, still a lot of season left when you talk about a whole month. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah there's that's... a lot of good opportunity for us as a football team to grow and get better and learn. You know, we got to learn how to close these games out and learn how to finish. And uh, the guys are, are, are working hard to do that, and we're excited about get going. I've heard different arguments on the whole learning how to win. Is I am a believer that a team does have to learn how to win, especially a young team over time. It could take each individual person however long it takes. Um, do you honestly do believe that, that a team has to learn how to win, uh, or is it just better players uh, become winners? I, I don't. There's many arguments about this because it's been a – a constant theme here this season. Yeah, I think it is. I think it's both probably um, for sure. But I do think that you have to go through the experience of it, you know. And I think these these are hard times for us right now. We're going through adversity, and but the guys are staying strong and their eyes are forward to the next opponent and working on getting better. That's the most important part. Does it feel as hard as it looks? Does it? Do you feel all these? Because we know this is not a finished product. This team is is going to continue to be morphed into whatever it's going to be moving down the road, and there are so many young players. Yeah, I think that uh, when you have the process that we have, when you take one week at a time, literally take one week at a time, and then move on, your eyes never go backwards, uh, when your eyes are always forward. I think it's a lot uh, guys focus like that, and I think they really do. You know, They have the 24-hour rule. Obviously, when you lose, it stings for that long. Uh, when you win, you know, sometimes you carry that along too too much sometimes. And I think really our guys are, are really been, you know, driven and processed uh, to do that 24-hour rule and then move to the next week. All right, let's talk about Justin because he got himself mentally, physically ready to play. He was good to go. Told our Mark Grody in the uh, post-game interview, he was, in his mind, he was starting as of Wednesday, he was going to play. And remember, we talked about it on the coach's show a week ago. I said at the very end, I said, you're going to have a hard time keeping QB1 out of that game. And so I, we all love seeing him out there. His performance in the pocket, the poise, the stepping up and not ejecting right away, those are all developmental points in the right direction. What was your overall view of not just throwing the ball but the, the few runs that he had as well? No, the, the passing game, you know, like I said, was really good. You know, what was he, 20 of 25, I want to say, for 80%. 254. Um, yeah, so it was really good. Had a lot of good connections with a lot of different receivers, which is excellent. Uh, you know, all attributed to the, the offensive line. Yeah. I talk about you know, that too. You know, yeah. the pocket was really clean. Um, so he got to operate the offense, you know, the right way with that clean pocket. So, my, you know, hats off to Simo and the offensive line really did a nice job. You know, and obviously the run game, you know, we, we had some design runs for him. Um, you know, the one that he pulled, uh, it was a pull read, you know, the one that he scored on, and it was a nickel pressure, you know. So the nickel came off the slot, and he ended up just giving him, you know, the outside move, and then they're off he went, you know, and, uh, Two really good blocks, smart blocks by BP, you know, and Dante Pettis on that uh, on that long run uh, to spring him all the way, and obviously he was off and running from there. BP, of course, is Byron Pringle, uh, and and a pull by Braxton Jones from left to right there. Yes, so that was a yeah. nice 
nice addition to it. So let's talk more about that offensive line because it's been a group that uh, has had a lot of rotation. You rotated in Alex Leatherwood. We'll talk about that later in the show a little bit at right tackle. I think 10 snaps. But uh, what was the key to their protection success yesterday? Yeah, just working five as one. You know, the guys are always, you know, working hard. And, uh, you know, the protection scheme was clean. Um, you know, for us, you know, there wasn't a lot of calls. There wasn't a lot of things that we had to do. It was really stuff that we've used for a long time. We've played this style of offense, you know, quite a few times this year. Uh, so our guys are really used to the protection calls that we need when we go against these, these types of teams. And I just thought it was a clean operation. You know, and then obviously having Alex in there was really nice, um, getting him in his 10 snaps that he got in there, and we're looking forward to increasing that. All right, let's talk about the defense, and, and let's start from the back to front because yep. of the – they were the story. They were the story yesterday. I mean, you got three rookies in there, black, white, 51 snaps. That's, that's you know, just uh, Jalen Johnson just talked about him today, uh, how he, you know, wasn't a perfect game by any means for anybody, but he impressed these guys because they all – decided at the beginning of the week this was not too big for them. That's what the discussion was. Yeah, and they really did a nice job. You know, they did a nice job. They really executed the plan the way we wanted to, um, you know, for the most part, you know, most of the day. And you could see that, you know, with the style of play we were playing. They played fast. They played physical. Um, they did a nice job with their disguises um, during the course of the game, which I think helped us out a lot. Um, you, know, you know, Blackwell ended up making a lot of tackles, still played well on special teams, which was great to see. You know, Jalen Jones did a nice job. Um, you know, we'll work with him on that one defensive pass interference. And we'll get that. into that later. We don't have yeah. time, but I want to take the part that one too, because people have varying opinions about that one too. Yep. But there is a there's a hard and fast rule to it. But yep. and then and then Sanborn. I mean, again, you know, showing up big. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I think we had what five five, five rookies out there at one time. You know, maybe six. I'm certain you didn't have that ever in your career. No, never. And then Do and Dominic out there playing too. So you know, there's a lot of rookies out there. But you know, Sanborn did a nice job. You know, the big thing with him, he wanted to work on lowering his tackle, you know, point. And we worked on that hard this week. And you could see all the tackles that he made um, against some good, some really good backs. And his target was low. He was running his feet. He was wrapping. You know, and uh, really good hamstring tackling. Second down and 11 for the 44-yard line. Here is a read option, and what a move by Fields. Breaks free the 50. Away he goes. Justin's gone, baby. 10-5 end zone. He's done it again. Just heard Justin Fields galloping again, a 55-yard touchdown run. Uh, I had called it 56 yards. They adjusted it to 55, and that was the play that we talked about in the first uh, segment here with Coach, back on the Coach's show. But he hit over 20 miles per hour on that run. Right. He said he was a little slow on that one, but he's pulling away from fast defensive backs. The, the third time he's had a 50-plus yard touchdown run. He's the only quarterback in the last 70 years to have three rushing touchdowns or 50 or more yards. I mean, that's a, a lot of math, yeah, obviously. That's a lot. That's a, that's a really good history to be part of, you know. Right. I mean, so, yeah. you know, and he's, you know, Justin's as fast as he needs to be, you know. So he, he might talk about, hey, 21 miles an hour or 21 and a half or whatever that might be. But uh, I just know this. He's as fast as he needs to be. You know, when he gets into that secondary, uh, he really goes north fast. And, and he puts it on that, and it's really hard for a free safety that's in the middle of the field. That was a middle of field coverage. And for the guy to run the alley with a guy coming at you that fast and that strong, um, it's it's very difficult to understand and dissect that angle that you need to take to get him down. Honestly, isn't it hard not to even get touched running up the middle of a field? I mean. Yeah, it really is. Did, I don't think they laid a touched. finger on him. So, yeah. It's crazy. It's it's quite the show. and it bring, Didn't you feel it in the building again? Yeah, the fans have been great. You know, the fans have been awesome. You know, uh, whether they're rooting for offense, defense, or kicking, they're, they're, they've been great all year for game, sure. Game day is Guac Day, Bears fans. And Good Foods Guacamole uses hand-scooped, perfectly ripened avocados available at Jewel. Pick up the guac today. We continue with our conversation with Bears head coach Matt Eberflus as the Bears get ready for their bye week. One other thing about fields on that, the third touchdown of 50-plus is the first Bear to accomplish that since Neil Anderson back in 1988, uh, just a few years after the Bears won the Super Bowl. Uh, great stuff there. I think a lot of folks are excited about the fact that he didn't run as much and that he did trigger from the pocket and he looked comfortable. This is another maybe coaching point you could discuss with, with Luke Getzey and, and Andrew Janoko. You're in those meetings. Mm -hmm. The throw to Nikhil Harry, uh, which was a, just a tremendous catch, but Justin is darting quicker in that pocket now. Very sudden movements. 
Right. It's it's not robotic. It's it, there's a suddenness to it that puts everybody on edge, and it's almost like he's just surveying the scene of whether he is going to throw a run. To me, that's a development. Is that what you guys want him to do? That kind of movement yeah. in there? No, there's no doubt. You know, he there's a big growth yesterday. Um, you know, in the pocket. You know, and then him him being able to look down the field. You know, he started to. You know, he pulled himself out of the pocket a couple times. You know, and that you know a couple of throws. The one that Cole came in on the side, also the third and ten. Um, and then the one you're talking about with Harry, you know, his his eyes are staying down the field. You know, and we're still working on his, him keeping his platform as he moves in the pocket. You know, to keep his sh- shoulders perpendicular to the line of scrimmage and not turning them so they're square to the line of scrimmage, so he can still have that good throwing angle and deliver passes even quicker than what he's doing now. So he's uh, really going to work on that. Um, he's improving on that for sure. Uh, but what a great pass, you know, that he threw there in that particular case to be able to escape. And it's hard on the defense, you know. When he moves out of that pocket, is he going to run, okay, or is he going to throw it deep or intermediate? And he's done all three, so it's very hard to defend. With the platform and the shoulders, does it affect the accuracy of the throw? Is that what it does? Yeah, it, do, it does. It, 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 well, that and, and then delivery time, you know, so getting the ball out of your hands, it affects everything. So he's working hard on that, and he's gotten a lot better, like I said. Everybody's talking about the interceptions and what happened on the, the EQ one. We, we all heard about it. EQ talked today about it. Got to come back, fight through, knock it away, come back to it. All, all of that being said, I, how are you guys focusing on those interceptions in terms of when they're happening as opposed to just happening? Yeah, you know, uh, just really taking them one by one, you know, taking them one by one, you know, and then operating. I thought the two-minute operation was better. You know, to me, when I'm just watching it on the sideline, the, the rhythm and timing of it, I think we would all agree that it was better, you know, delivering those even in the second drive, you know, was better, you know. So I just think that uh, we just got to do a great, great job of not putting the ball in harm's way, um, knowing where our lines are in terms of what lines we're trying to get to, you know, if we're getting to the 32-yard line or 35-yard line for a field goal or whatever that is what we need and making sure we, we take care of the football. He hates losing. He's competitive as the day is long. But you even notice with his temperament after games when things really bug him and when he th- – I mean, I think he feels he may, he took a step too mentally with that passing yesterday. Yeah, he sounded much more optimistic and strong at the podium and with us in the post game. You could feel it. You can mm-hmm. look at him. Yeah, that's just growth. You know, he's just growing. You know, he's going to continue to grow as he gets these more more experiences. As he grows, uh, he's going to get better and better and better, and he's going to you know keep gaining that strength. Here's Justin Fields with time to throw, going deep. He Q St. Brown over the shoulder inside the oh. ten. That ball hung up there for EQ to run under it. Beautiful throw from Justin Field to the ex-Packer, Equinius St. Brown. Calling all Bears fans. Get the ultimate VIP fan package with Chicago Bears VIP. Secure a game ticket and appearance from Bears legends and more by visiting ChicagoBearsVIP.com. Welcome back to the Bears Coaches Show with head coach Matt Eberflus. There's the field's throw to Equinius St. Brown. 56 yards, got behind Jair Alexander. You know, highly regarded individual. He was he was trying to jump a lot. He jumped the, the Nikhil Harry route. Right. And was in trail, and he was trailing this one. And here's the thing I believe that people keep forgetting. Justin Fields didn't run a ton at Ohio State. You got to know Justin Fields because of that deep ball accuracy. You got to know Justin Fields for throwing the football. We saw throws yesterday that, as we continue to break this down over these first couple segments, that really gets you excited. And yeah, there's that's no one. doubt. There's no doubt. And that, the one you're referring to, you know, the, the EQ long pass, you know, that was really – the rhythm and timing of that was so good, um, and the height of that pass. You know, you look, go back and look at the height of that pass and how that ball came in. You know, it came in, dropped in the bucket, dropped right in the bucket. And uh, we've been saying it all along: the accuracy of those deep passes, man. And that was just a great example of him being able to do that. And uh, um, those guys are getting a good connection. You know, him and EQ. So it's uh, it's exciting to see. Is that another coaching point? Does Justin at times throw a level throw as opposed to? Putting some height on it? Or no, I that... think he's learning how to change up his speeds. Okay. You know, he's do, he's doing a good job of learning how to change his arm angles, you know, based on where he is in the pocket, uh, where he is on the field, because um, that does change when you get into the red zone. Um, but uh, he's doing a really good job with that. All right, let's talk more about uh, let's talk about the running game. David Montgomery still, you know, doing his thing, run, running hard as can be. Nice seven-yard touchdown run. Khalil Herbert, everybody thought he'd come back, potentially, if he's healthy enough because of the hip, to come back for Philadelphia, but... 
it's four games. It's right. not four weeks, and that, right. that's the bummer. I, I was I didn't know that. Yeah, it's no, four I, games, I so he'll be back for the Bills game. But yeah. uh, we're excited to get him back. Uh, he, he's been working his tail off to get back, and uh, he'll be ready to go. Yeah, and Tristan Emmer getting involved in there a little bit too, had, as they call the pony package one time with two of them. And Darrington Evans, again, another nice play. He's got a burst to him. Yeah, that was a special play by Darrington. Yeah. I mean, to get us down the first thing goal in the nine, that was really good. And, uh, uh, you know, obviously we were, it was a trap play. They had, they were blitzing right into the B gap uh, with uh, uh, Quay Walker there, and uh, he just you know bypassed him and went right there for you know a nice gain right there. Thought it was a really good really good run. You know he's a veteran, so you you knew of him. Tennessee Titans, you played against him. When you're sitting on a practice squad for much of the year and you're seeing what he can do in practice every day, you know do you have it in the back of your mind? You know. Like, gosh, we got to find room for these guys sometimes. Yeah, we certainly have talked about that. Ryan and I talk about personnel every day, so we're always uh, mindful of that. We look at guys on the, on the show teams, you know, and he was doing a, our look squad for a while. So um, we were always commenting on him, how explosive, you know, the, you know, the burst that he has, the vision that he has, the cut ability and all those things that runners have, and he certainly has that. EQ mentioned, I'm sure it came up today in the team meeting because he mentioned the first and goal at the nine and how it didn't result in what you wanted to, you know. Yeah, so first and, backwards. yeah, so first and goal in the nine, you know, we end up getting a holding call, you know. So, that you know, that, that's part of the, you know, the run design is designed to go up the middle, you know. So we got to really do a good job of punching it right there where the double team is. Uh, we end up bouncing it out, which kind of created a, a, a situation where Tevin was yanking on the guy rather than pushing him. Um, so obviously he can't do that, but the run design was supposed to go up the middle there. So we end up getting a holding penalty. It gets it the first and 19. Um, we get a TFL, so then it goes to uh, second and 24, I believe. Yeah. You know, And then the third down play then ends up – we go to, we get it for third and 22, I think it is, something like that. But Justin does a great job on third down getting half of that back. Yeah. Um, it gets it down to the 12-yard line, I want to say, Dante Pettis throw, and that was good. And then we end up kicking the field goal from there. Uh, let's talk uh, more about the offensive line. Early in the year, it was a lot about Sam Mustafer, uh, a lot about what, what was going to happen with Tevin. Uh, you know, lost Cody for a bit. How's Braxton Jones going to handle playing as a rookie fifth rounder out of a small school? These guys have hung in there. Yes, there's been a lot of sacks over the course of the year, but no sacks yesterday. Right. So you're seeing growth there. I mean, overall, I know you, you always mention Simo, and it, for those who don't know Simo, it's Chris Morgan. What he's done with that group. I can't wait to hear what your guys' overall evaluation be when it's all said and done because they, they have hung in there with right. a lot of change. Yeah, it's a tight group. I mean, you go in that room, the offensive line room, those guys are tight. You know, they hang out a lot together off you know, off the field, you know, and, and they, you know, have dinner once a week together. So it's a tight knit group and you can see that on the field. Those guys are always working together. It doesn't matter the combination. Um like we said, we've had a lot of different combinations. Uh, and that's really the glue that holds them together is their is their relationship that they have, you know, in the building and out of the building. And there's a standard, you know, there's a standard um, in our building to how we operate and how we do things. And the offensive line certainly shows that every single week. Fields with two receivers to the right. Snap is back. They are bringing extras. Everything's picked up. He steps up against the pressure, stops and pops. Wide open left side. Come at the catch. Cole Komet inside the 35-yard line of the Green Bay Packers. 24 yards and a first down. Great seats available to see your Chicago Bears this season at Soldier Field. Get your tickets at chicagobears.com slash tickets and some big games coming up at Soldier Field when we come out of the bye. Welcome back to the Bears Coaches Show. I'm assuming, because I heard it more than once, that you love this throw. Uh, Justin Fields, a Cole Komet, stepping up in the pocket, didn't leave, found him on the sideline, open, and uh, 23 yards for the big fell. Yeah, it was really good. Um, you know, to me, the, the poise in the pocket there. Um, and again, we talked to Justin today. There's a couple of things he could even do better um, on that play. You know, so we talked about our, our shoulders being, you know, a perpendicular to the line of scrimmage, keeping them square there, and then riding the pocket, you know, north, and then being able to deliver the dig route, you know, because the dig route coming across the field right in front of him there. Um, he can improve that way, which he's going to. But uh, to me, what was so impressive about the play was his vision. He, he rode the pocket, came up, and then before he, he got to the line of scrimmage, had, had the, the vision to be able to see Cole on the sideline and delivered a nice pass. Uh, to get that third down conversion. I was doing some research prior to the game and just, know, you know, and you guys will do all this analysis as well. Inside the 30 passing, Fields has had a great run. Yesterday, not as many throws, more runs. And overall in the red zone, a lot more runs than passes. Right. Is that philosophical, game by game, matchup by matchup? Has it just turned out that way? Or what, what you're thinking? No, I think it's a, it's what the defense has given you. What they, they present, um, you know, their tendencies they present, 
you know, in the course of the week, you know, and then we take advantage of those tendencies, you know. So if a team is operating out of a shell, for example, obviously we want to run the ball to a light box. Um, if they want to bring down and stop our run, then obviously we're going to do some things in the pass game that we can do, either play action pass or different things based on their coverage concepts. So it's really based on that. Obviously, in the in the low red zone, we do like to run the ball, you know. So that's a successful team in the red in the red zone is a team that can run it in. Um, so you know, as the field shrinks down there, as you get closer and closer, it's always good. As we saw, you know, after we had that big pass to EQ, we ran it in. Um, you know, you know, Demo ran it in there with a real nice run on that touchdown. In addition to that, does that kind of also give you a little bit of um, mojo in terms of just the physicality and what you're trying to have that other team feel? Because hey, you know, when we get in here, we're going to pound you. Yeah, I think that's who we are. I mean, we're the Chicago Bears. We're going to run the football, and uh, we know that, and our opponent knows it. But uh, it's something that we we believe in. Third down excellence is continuing to rise as well. Um, Six of eleven yesterday. Now at 45.1 for the season, mm-hmm. the franchise record, you'd have it if it's season ended today, it's 43.9. That happened in 1989. I know none of that really matters, but it, it's approaching the goal that Luke Getzey talked about for yep. third down conversions, which at the beginning of the year was not so hot. And so, right. again, this is another thing to hang your hat on. That's a big down, obviously, we know that. No, that's and that's above our goal, you know. So it's, it's, uh, it's been really good. Um, obviously, Justin's a big part of that. Um, you know, I, I think I read a couple of weeks ago that he has either ran for or taken uh, 27 of those conversions were his. You know, I think it's up to 30 something now. 30 yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. So his ability to uh, you know drop back and scramble sometimes, uh, drop back and either deliver the ball, which was what he wants to do, we want him to do, and uh, you know the design runs, you know to be able to get those third downs, and uh, he's done a really good job with that. That's a good number. You know, it's a good number in the league. Um, it's a good number for our franchise. All right, Chase Claypool, a little more snaps yesterday, avoided some injury, uh, lost the football on that one. It just shows some toughness. He continued his day. Yeah, I thought it was good. Um, you know, again, he's just got to do a really good job of getting his alignments down, you know, so that's important emotions um, as he gets into this offense. You know, he played 34 plays yesterday, played solid, um, you know, and that, you know, had a real nice pass before that fumble. You know, a really nice route. You know, that's what we know, a little bit of a swirl route we call, and he did a really nice job coming back to the ball. Uh, very nice delivery by Justin on that play. Then the very next play, we get him on a, on a dig, you know, a nice in cut. Um, he's going to the ground, and if they call that down by contact, I, my suggested thing they would do is they would did leave it. They would leave it as it would be as, as the call was on the field. Um, but because they called it, called it a fumble, there was not enough evidence to turn it over. Um, because of the camera situation, you know, we yeah. weren't, didn't have a lot of cameras yesterday um, because of the timing of the game. You know, if that's a night game, you probably have more cameras. It may have got overturned. So, uh, but uh, that's where it was. Rogers looking, Rogers throwing into the end zone. Incomplete coverage, Jack Sanborn on Robert Tunyon. Two Chicago area products, Lake Zurich over McHenry East High School. It's fourth down. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bears Coaches Show. Just heard one of Jack Sanborn's many plays in the game. Uh, I chose the pass break up in the end zone to Robert Tunyon. Two local kids uh, up in the northern suburbs. That Tunyon's from uh, up there as well, and he helps break up the pass. Aaron Rodgers threw up the hands, wanted contact, and a flag, didn't get it. Now they got something on tape to see, okay, he, he can do that too. Yeah, I think it was a good. It was a really good uh, play by him. You know, I thought he did a really good job of utilizing his length there where you know he with his left hand kind of reached out to, to you know knock the ball down and he did a nice job with his discipline with the right hand being able to trail that hand behind um not grab or, or you know or you know turn the, hook, the player yeah. hook the player so i thought overall it was a really good play a nice third down stop in the red zone um it was excellent play for by him. all right everybody knows i'm super excited about this kid and I, I don't know what it is it's just the way he patrols that position uh and just fires out you know angles Physical and as you said, Lord is, is tackling. Got ankles yesterday. Got thigh, everything, hamstring. Mm-hmm. Uh, just it's just fun to watch him play. And he had ten. Ta- he had nine in the first half. He had nine tackles in the first half, and he was very. You just he pops out. Yeah, yeah. He, he's a high energy guy. You know, he's super smart. Um, understands the game. You know that Mike position plays between the tackles. You know a lot of times, but he's able to stretch it all the way to the sideline. You know, he does a really good job with that. And uh, in the passing game, he's in between the hashes a lot of times, working off a of number three, uh, which he does a really good job with that. And uh, he's directing traffic in there. Um, like we said a few weeks ago, the game's not too big, and he keeps on producing for us um, in tackles. You know, he's made a lot of nice plays. Um, he's going to get more takeaways as the season goes. We're excited about that because he's, he's, he's a lot. 
he's near a lot of them. So we're excited about him getting some more takeaways. Everyone just assumes, well, he's a, he's a fill-in at linebacker. He's an undrafted player that uh, is playing special teams. But with the way he's building his own resume here in confidence, I don't know why you'd want to anybody put a ceiling on what yeah. could happen. Yeah, we never do that. We never put a ceiling on a player. Um, it doesn't matter where you're drafted. That doesn't make any, any difference to us. You know, it's important that we leave it open. Let him compete. Let him let him perform. Let him do his thing, and the sky's the limit for him. So, um, we're going to do it with all of our players, and so we're and Jack's no different. What would a year in the Bears off season program, weight room, and all that do for a player like that? Well, I think it's just you know obviously as, as these get young guys grow, you know, because they're continuing to grow. Rookies get you know stronger the first few years for sure, um, and they change a little bit still. But uh, more importantly, he's going to be in the system. You know, he's going to be in our system another year. So it won't be new to him. So now he'll be able to learn more depth, more width of knowledge to be able to play the game even faster. Let's talk Jalen Jones. Met him for the first time a whole season Friday in the locker room. Delightful young man. Love talking to him. Got into a big discussion about uh, just, you know, being undrafted, being in the SEC. Uh, And I got the impression that, you know, this is not too big for him either. And he started talking about, yeah, you guys showed him plenty of Kenny Moore tape. That's an undrafted success story. Those things must really hit home hard for these guys. And like, even what Jalen Johnson was t- saying today about all these young players, they just may, he just could tell during the course of the week that they were, they were going to go out there and they were just going to play like a veteran yeah. and see what happens. Yep, they were confident. You know, they're a confident bunch. You know, they, they really are a tight group, you know, like a lot of our position groups. And, uh, you know, they always rely on each other. And they're there for each other every single time. And uh, the guys put the work in during the week. You know, they really did a nice job at executing um, the game plan. We thought we had a really good work week of practice um, during the week. And those guys, you know, when you look at those players of the past, the Rondé Barbers, Barbers that have played in the system, you know, Kenny Moore, different players that have played in the system at that nickel spot or even corner, um, there's a lot of great old veterans, you know, that you can rely on, old tape that you can look at because we've been playing this system in the league for a long time. I mean, it's a couple of decades now. So um, it's an easy system to uh, to go back and look at you know the, the lineage of, of your position. What are we telling Jalen then on that play uh, that he got called for? Yeah, so, yeah, so the penalty, you know, obviously he got out of face, you know, at the beginning. Obviously as a corner, if you're good in the first five yards, you're usually good for the rest of the down. Um, typically you'll lose in the first five yards. But that does happen, right? So a guy gets a good release, and he did. Uh, Watson got a good release, and he was up the field, and we were in a trail position. And then uh, you know Aaron saw it and then threw, you know, threw the, the fade ball. And we just got to do a good job of looking back. You know? So we have to drill that better um, you know, when you're out of phase. Time it up. You know, still try to bust the triangle you know, with your inside hand there. And, but you have to look back at the, the football because if there's contact before, um, the ball gets there, um, and you're not looking back. They're going to call that most of the time. 30 seconds to go. First half. Bears have the lead 16-3. to three. They bring Tunyon in motion to the right side of the formation. Six on the play clock, and Rodgers surveying. Snap. Going to run it. And Aaron Jones is gobbled up and slammed down to the ground. Watts the first down of the scene. 96 with a tackle for loss. It's fourth down Green Bay. Back on the Bears Coaches Show with Matt Eberflus, our final segment tonight. So we'll also look ahead to what's going on in the bar week. We'd like to throw a few topics here in the air. So Aaron Rodgers, I, I, I noticed a couple things yesterday. First of all, uh, he averaged 3.3 seconds to throw. It was the longest of any quarterback in the NFL so far this week with a Monday night game. Uh, st- still the play. Uh, that doesn't seem like typical Rodgers. Why did you think this happened? Um, well, I think that uh, our guys did a really good job um, with pass coverage, uh, number one. Uh, number two, we have to do a better job with pressure. You know, I don't think our, our front four uh, really uh, pressured, um, you know, as much as we wanted to. Uh, we obviously want to get more pressure. That that number should be more, you know, in the twos, obviously. We know that. Yeah. But uh, um, So we got to continue to do that. You know, I thought Dominic Robinson was really close on the fourth and four, uh, the one we they scored on. He was turning the corner. He's just got to finish. He had his hips through, his shoulders were through, and now he's just got to get that that left arm of the tackle off of him, and he can step through and make that hit on the quarterback. So, um, you know, Taco did have a hit on the yep. quarterback. You know, he did a nice job on the, on the scramble, um, and he did have a nice hit on the quarterback there. But, uh, again, we got to generate more pressure. Um, you know, 
with our situation in the back end, uh, like yesterday, we didn't really want to, you know, dive into a lot of pressure. We played more coverage, um, so we could, you know, do a good job with uh, disguising and playing, you know, our coverages that we always play. But, uh, but overall, um, yeah, we need to do a better job getting pressure. See, I was separating it. <laughs> I was, I was looking at the positive of. The way those guys just plastered coverage and yeah. hung in there as long as Elijah Hicks in the end zone on Watson, that's a good six, seven seconds of coverage. That's almost impossible with a guy like that. But, yes, the, the pressure. And um, the reality is these are guys that uh, you've brought in and there have been changes and they're, 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 they're doing what they can right now. But Yeah, gotta, yeah they're battling. Yeah. Yep, they're, they're battling. battling. They understand next man up mentality and, uh, you know, tribute to the coaches. The coaches get those guys ready. You know, it's not easy to uh, to get a pair and a spare ready. You know, we always you know talk about that. We always spare. have a guy at left corner. You got to have two guys that can play that spot, but you got to have the third guy. And we've been on the third guy in a lot of our spots right. uh, during the course of the, of the year, and so that's important. And there's no excuses, no explanations. We expect those guys to go in and play. Um, so the coaches know that, and they've been a, uh, done a good job with that since training camp of getting that spare ready to go. Rogers milked the play clock. Down to two, three, one, almost every snap, to my recollection, even when the game clock was stopped. What do you think the reason was? Was he just trying to figure out what you guys were doing? Uh, yeah, I think a lot of times you, you do that so you can give different hard counts and, and do different things at the line of scrimmage, which he's, he's you know, obviously very good at. And, you know, he's trying to discern what you're doing. That's just all part of the whole disguise game and what we're trying to do. So it's... Uh, that's probably probably it for the most part. Yeah, longest completion yesterday, 21 yards for Aaron Rodgers. Now it's time to look ahead, brought to you by Bet Rivers, the official sportsbook partner of the Bears. Uh, the next game, December 18th, against the 11-1 Eagles. They beat the Titans 35-10 yesterday. Jalen Hurts, who ran for three, or those guys ran for 350 the week before, they threw for 380 yards and three touchdowns. We're not going to talk much about them right now, but... That's what's in the offing, along with the Buffalo Bills after that. And the one-game-at-a-time league got two powerhouse teams coming into Soldier Field the next two weeks. You mentioned at the outset that you want these guys to spend some time you know, in their in their playbook a little bit into their uh, iPads to see, look at some breakdowns and, and, and get better in a couple of three areas like you did for the mini-buy. Yep. You're, you guys as a coaching staff are going to work in the beginning part of this week, I'm assuming, uh, to, to focus on that as well. But can a player – actually lose the bye week by not being at least a little bit. I mean, I know it's been a long grind, but you can't simply just completely get away from football or even just even getting a little conditioning. Yeah, we want our players to win the bye. You know, we want our players to uh, really get better uh, during this time. So how do you do that? Well, physically I get better because I rest. You know, I get my body right um, and I get healed all the way so I can, you know, really go these last four games. And that's an important part of it. And then mentally. How do you get better mentally? Well, you can study. You can study how I'm going to work uh, to get better with my coach. You know, so the, and it really comes down to technique, technique, fundamentals, how I'm reading my keys so I can play faster, how I get lined better, aligned better. So the coaches are working in partnership with the players, as we know, um, and they're going to do it this week, and they're going to be in communication with each other. And it's 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 time off, but it's not all the way off. You know, so it's still work. Um, you can take a couple of days to refresh the batteries, but uh, overall, we want our guys coming back ready to work and understanding how they got to improve with the coach and player partnership. The fact that it's Eagles Bills in those two games just to be, the beginning grab a guy's attention because they want to play the best. I mean, right now these teams are doing yeah, the best. obviously they're they're you know in b- both you know conferences you know both good teams you know and um, you know obviously in the top of their conferences right now and uh, again we'll see how we measure up. How are you and what have you learned about yourself in this first 13 weeks of your first NFL season as a head coach? Yeah, you know, it's really uh, the players, coaches, everybody involved have, has done a great job of laying the foundation. You know, the foundation is here in terms of how we work, you know, the work ethic, you know, the intensity which we play, um, being smart football players. We're continuing to educate our players, and we're laying foundation. And I tell the guys this all the time, it's championship habits. How we're doing things is laying the foundation for championship habits. And what comes from that is the results. You know, the results come from that. And we got to keep working, keep grinding. But I'm proud of the guys, how they have hung together, the perseverance, the determination, and they keep going every single week. And the coaches have done, have done a great job. The player leadership has done a great job. How about Matt Eberflus, though? I'm talking about Matt Eberflus, too. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, I'm just part of a team. You know, I'm part of the football team. 
and uh, I'm the head football coach, and uh, you know, hopefully, you know, a, a good piece of this is is working together with the coaches and working with the players. And again, like I said, they've done a really nice job. Is there anything that has surprised you in this position? Um, no, not really. Um, you plenty know, of training. I've talked. I've talked to a lot of my mentors about it um, that have been head coaches that are Hall of Fame coaches, and um, you know, I, I, had, I had a lot of advice going into it. You know, that I I, I sought out. And uh, it's really not been a surprise, but uh, certainly there's twists and turns. You know, you got to be able to adjust, adapt, overcome, and uh, and again, those are things are always always things you can do, and uh, we're going to do those. All right, we'll have a good bye week. I know you're working too, but a little relaxation for uh, yourself as well, and you and your family. All right, thank you. Appreciate it, Bears head coach Matt Eberflus. Coming up next, we've got top of the hour news from CBS. I want to thank our producers Keith Johnson, Andy Gersher, Dan Brilli, and Jordan Treadup for Coach Eberflus. I'm Jeff Joniak. Have a great night, everybody. Appreciate you listening. This is News Radio 1059 WBBM. Good night.